have a good time Put a smile on your face, yeah Can't be caring Relation Radio mm-hmm. Even brighten your day to look 
at us and see how much he loves us. He continually pours out his love for us. So I want to welcome you to the Just For You podcast. Listen, I want to send a shout out to all the you, the listeners, whether it's your first time, I want you to know we Thank you for taking time to listen in on today. A shout out to our producer and CEO, Dr. Kimmy Robertson, better known as our Kimmy Kim. And listen, we'll share it with you too. I want to say hi to my husband, Pastor Donald Wright Jr., with your fine self. Yes, I said it. I said his fine self. But on the way, I just want you to know I love you. I'm excited about today. God is good. Listen, we woke up this morning. We didn't have to do it. He could have allowed us not to see this day, but his grace, his mercy allowed us to be here, and we're mighty glad about it. Well, for those of you that have never listened in to the Just For You podcast, I want to share with you what the Just For You podcast is all about. The Just For You podcast is designed to encourage, empower, and engage listeners to thrive spiritually and naturally with utilizing biblical principles. Just For You will allow and reveal truth embedded in the Holy Bible to illustrate kingdom living, soul winning, compassion, and strategies to serve mankind, making a difference locally and globally. Just for you will allow listeners to hear teachings that are applicable, guests that will inspire and opportunities for serving more effectively in the home, church, school, community, and marketplace. That is what Just For You is all about. And as I said, we're super glad that we made it to another week. Amen. There's nothing like being able to see God do something amazing, and that amazing that he's done is in you and I. Well, listen, we're going to begin with a word of prayer, and before we uh, do that, I just want to again greet you. I want to also remind you that we have a very wonderful guest on today. You're going to be hearing about her, the fabulous chef, Erica Dorsey. Can't wait for you to get to know her and all that she's doing and all that God is doing in her life to share and inspire you. So if you will, please, let's join in in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask, oh God, that you will be with us through this podcast. Lead, guide, and direct us. Give us wisdom. Give us strength. Give us peace. Give us what we need for everything we need to do. We ask that you bless our guest, um, Chef Erica Dorsey. Would you bless our Elation family? Be with our CEO and visionary, Dr. Kimmy Robinson, also with all of the listeners, Father, you know exactly what they need and how they need it. You know exactly what needs to take place. And we say we thank you for all. Lead God and direct us. Give us wisdom for all things. We trust you. And, Lord, provide. Make a way out of no way. Someone may be believing you for one thing, and another may be believing you for something else, but you are the God that answers us all. You're able to do anything but fail, and for that we say thank you. I thank you for your love, your grace, your mercy, your anointing, your peace, your kindness. We can go on and on about how great you are, but we're trusting you on today to do great and marvelous things. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your peace. 
Thank you for your understanding. Forgive us all of our sins, and we'll forgive others. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Well, listen, as I said, we've got a wonderful podcast for you on today. We're excited about today's lesson. Hey, I want to know, what exactly are you eating? Because you are what you eat. Today's lesson and topic is, you are what you eat. I know you're probably thinking, well, some of you are saying steak and potatoes. Somebody else is saying sushi. Someone else is saying maybe we just like burger and fries. Some say, I don't want meat at all. I just would love to have my vegetables or vegan dishes. But I am here to talk to you about what are you eating because you are what you eat, and that is spiritually. Each day we are blessed to wake up, and it is up to us to start our day in the mindset of which we'd like to be. Listen, life is hard at times. It doesn't guarantee us an easy road, but what it does give us all is the same start. There are 24 hours in a day, seven days in a week. We have the mindset and the ability to stretch ourselves as far as we'd like to stretch or be as stagnant as we'd like to be. But one thing is for sure. We know there's intimate intimate fasting and there are different ways to not eat. But when you eat, are you eating with a healthy mindset? Let's talk about today, you are what you eat. We're going to be looking in the book of John, and it's going to be at the 50th verse that we start, and it reads as such. This is the bread which cometh down from heaven, that a man may eat thereof and not die. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. If any man eat of this bread, He shall live forever, and the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. The Jews, therefore, strove among themselves, saying, how can this man give us his flesh to eat? Then Jesus said unto them, verily, verily, I say unto you, Except ye eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, ye have no life in you. Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood have eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed, and he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. This is that bread which came down from heaven, not as your manna, and or did. He that eateth of this bread shall live forever. These things said he in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they had heard this, said, This is an hard saying. Who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at him, he said unto them, Don't this offend you? What and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the spirit that quickeneth, the flesh profited nothing, the words that I speak. Unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Let's take a pause there right one moment. Here Jesus is saying, listen, I know you eat natural food. It was called manna then. It was a blessed choice eating, such as one would say for steak, uh, one would say for uh, seafood. It was considered good. But here's the thing. With all the good that they had in 
and the nutrients of the manna, it was nothing better than him. We have whatever that choice dish is that you love so dearly. Believe me, when it comes to your faith in this Christian walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, that becomes totally different. Us partaking of him is learning of his ways. It's being practical in our spiritual living. Listen, you have to learn what it is to be loving. You have to learn what it is to be kind. You have to learn what it is to serve. These things don't come by eating natural food. But it does come from eating the word of God. That means when I pick up my Bible, when I attend local services, when I'm reading and I'm going through personal Bible study, I just don't take that for granted. I don't take for granted that the words on the page are just for me to read. I have to eat this thing. I have to take it in. I have to believe it. I have to understand it. I have to sometimes see what we do sometimes is that we will read, but we don't study. Sometimes you have to go back, get a dictionary, break the words down, make sure you understand what it's saying so you don't misinterpret it or take it to be something it's not. This word is so crucial that you're Living after you go depends on it. I said it. When you receive the Lord as your Lord and Savior, he promises something called eternal life. That means long after you leave here in this flesh, in this natural living, and life is over, there is a promise called eternal life. But in order to reach that place, in order to understand it, we must first understand how to live. What are you eating on today? We can eat as healthy as we want to eat. We can be as fit as a fiddle. It does not guarantee eternal life. It does not promise you that you're going to live forever. It is important to understand when we're eating what we're eating. Why is it beneficial to us? When you think about the word of God, it is beneficial. It will always enrich you. It will always nourish you. And sometimes when you don't want to even hear the words that it may say, because you may feel some type of way, it still is good for you. You remember when we were younger, there was something called Father's John, and I got so tickled. I heard someone mention this the other day, and it blessed me. See, Father John tastes nasty. It is not the best taste. As some would say, you'd have to have an acquired taste. But what it does for you is it brings healing in the body. How many times have we been able to see through the word of God that it has something beneficial to bring healing for our lost soul? What are you eating? Do you even eat the word of God? It is just like a plate you would fix that would have all the nutrients and values needed for the human body. There's something for your mind. There's something for your body. There's something for your spirit. There's something for your soul. There's nothing that you can't pull from this word of God that won't be able to answer something you're going through. What are you eating? Some of us may like junk food. We may like something that's just thrown that gives us that temporary rush like sugar, and it does something for us. But can I say this? There's nothing temporary about a good word from God. It is eternal. It lasts a long time, and it offers you something that will give you strength. I don't know about you, but I know in my everyday life, and we all can be real, some people have their weight down to a T. Some of us are still trying to figure it out, how to continually stay healthy because life changes, health can change, many things can occur. But at the end of the day, I've learned what I eat, I become. And there's a scripture in the 
book of Isaiah 1 and 19. It says in Isaiah 1 and 19, it tells us this. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the fat of the land. Now, in some cultures, and as we understand in American culture, we are considered unhealthy being fat. But can I give you a different take on being fat today? I surely am fat. When the word talks about fatness, we're talking also spiritually, eating of the word. We are full. We are uh, in a place where there is joy and understanding, not in an unhealthy way, but a healthy way. Because the more we eat of him, the more we can give away, the more we can share in our serving, in our love, in the things that we do in this life to bring someone else into the knowledge of him. What are you eating on today? Do you have healthy scriptures? Do you have a mindset that the old and the ugly and the things that rot you on the inside, that you have something you've read that cleanses you like living water and gives you strength that you can become better and you can become stronger? We need what the word offers us. So I stop by to remind you about what you eat. The Bible even goes on to say that we are as babes when we have milk. Milk is the beginning stages of your Christianity, your thinking, and the way you do things in the world. The mature people of the gospel tend to take this word and eat it because you would want to give a coarse piece of meat to a baby that can only drink milk. It would choke them. So it is in your Christian message. When most people come into the knowledge and the faith of God, they have to learn how to live. They don't just jump into being pastors or jump into being uh, a, a person that is a strong witness. Not saying that you can't, but it takes time to govern your mind, time to accept and commit, time to refresh yourself and not be turned away from the things or to turn away from the things of this world. May I remind you, we are all a work in progress and process. We are moving and striving towards great things. And that means that we have to subject our minds to being committed to a process. And you can use that in your Christian life, your spiritual life, your business world, wherever you are, your mind has to be subjected to something in order for the outcome of it to be what it needs to be. You think I'm telling you something that's not true? Be around negativity long enough. You'll find yourself negative. All it takes if your mind is in condition for someone to say something negative. Have you ever been in a room and somebody start complaining and you start thinking, yeah, that's true. And before you know it, you'll say, yeah, you know what, I agree with that. And then you may start to put your two cents in. But when your mind is conditioned to say, mm-mm, I'm not letting anything in that's going to force me to be and throw me off of what I know is right and what I know is true. I'm going to stand firm on what I believe. And listen, you're not going to always get it right. But something about conditioning your mind is called conviction after the fact. After the fact, you'll find if you did not follow that which you know was right, you'll feel some type of way. That's a good thing. Because anytime you feel okay about everything and anything going on, something is wrong. So I'm going to say this. Trust God. Submit your mind 
Give him the wisdom and the ability to change you because it's worth changing for. I can feel I'm fine. But if I could go and I had to go to a doctor and he said, well, listen, let's do some blood work. Let's do this. My feelings and thought process of what I thought can be wonderful isn't wonderful. I have to acknowledge that. Now, sometimes medicines can help, and sometimes they can. Bottom line is what I choose to believe by faith and do what I can do. Faith without works is dead. To be able to improve and hope through the knowledge I have, then I can become strong. You can become strong. So I just stopped by to encourage you and to remind you how important it is for you to stay true and understand there's something greater coming. Life will end. In our Christian faith, we believe that when we leave here in this earth, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. To be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So, choices. So on today, the next time you sit down to eat, I want you to remember the spiritual process. You are what you eat. And I certainly hope you're not famished. You're not starving because you haven't eaten spiritually in a long time. But I have good news for you. In case you are, Famished, hungry, you still have time while you have breath to begin putting together a meal that will be good for you through the word of God. You have time. So I pray that this week's exhortation has been a strength an encouragement that has become thought-provoking for you to make choices to eat healthier. And through that, we can see a lot of things come to pass, from our mind to our heart to our spirit to our body to everything financially in our dreams. And our goal, as a man thinketh, so is he. Be encouraged today and know you are what's excited about the exhortation and I'm excited about you. And listen, I wouldn't do, dare, speak upon such an awesome topic without having such an awesome guest. Listen, it's important. I know that everyone, listen, time, the new year begins. The first thing we all say that, well, not everybody, but most people that want to say we're going to change our eating habits, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. But listen, it's mind over matter and through prayer that we make it successfully to do that. Well, on today, we have a Fabulous show by the name of Erica Dorsey. She is the owner of Savory Succulent. I want her to share her story on today. We know this is Black History Month. We honor her as a woman in business, African American, Black, that is doing a great work in her community and business, and we want her to share with you. I would like to introduce the song and present to others none other than Chef Erica Dorsey. 
How are you on today? Well, I'm sure she's there. I'm sure she's getting there. Let's see where we are. Are you there, Erica? I hear something. Let's see. All righty. We're going to wait for her and give her a moment. She may be being connected in. I'm trying to see if she's there. But listen, while we're waiting on her, I want you to pay real close attention to what is going on. Let me check in on our guest. No, we can't hear you. She was asking, can we hear her? We can't hear you. Let me make sure you're unmuted. And we'll check that on the line. But while we're getting her taken care of, I just want you to be really, really cautious about what you're eating, how you're taking it in, because it's important. It's very important to know that it's a great thing not only to be healthy mentally. Last week we talked about uh, being mentally healthy because it is important. We had a guest on last week who shared with us the importance of being able to seek help um, and do the things that needed to be done. So we're going to check back in and see if our guest is there. Erica, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hey, how are you on today? (laughs) I'm doing good, and yourself? Good. Welcome, welcome to the Just For You podcast on Elation Radio. We're glad to have you on today. Yes, I am delighted to be here. Well, listen, I wanted everybody to know, we know this is Black History Month, so we honor you and your business and all that you're doing. For those who don't know you, would you share with them who you are? And we're going to talk about your journey to get to where you are, but who you are, who is Erica Dorsey? Yes, I am Erica Dorsey, a.k.a. Chef Erica D, and as you know, as women, we hold so many different hats. So, with -hmm. that being said, I am also a mom. I am Mm -hmm. a student. I am a cooking instructor, and I also Mm -hmm. am a host of my newly released show, Savory Succulents on the Move. Woo-hoo! Awesome, (laughs) awesome, awesome. And, you know, you said a mouthful because your plate is full. No pun intended. Your plate is full. So you're saying you're a mom. You've got all these things going. Let's talk about how did you come to love cooking? Uh, Were you raised cooking in the kitchen? Did you decide as you got older? Talk to us about your dream and how it came to that. Sure, yes. So it it definitely began when I was younger. Uh, Growing up, I was always Mm -hmm. obsessed with food. When I was three years old, uh, my grandparents, they bought me a stool. My grandmother loved Mm -hmm. to cook, and and she never had to touch the food. She could tell it was done by the smell. And so she Mm -hmm. would give me a stool before church every morning, and I'd be three years old standing up there frying chicken before church. (laughs) Wow. Wow. Mm. It began there and just went from there. My mom was a great cook growing up. I was always in the kitchen with her and my other grandmother. She cooked as well, so it was all around me. Um, Mm. I grew up watching more Food Network than cartoons. I've just always been extremely into food, food and kids. It's it's a tie for the love there, (laughs) definitely. Mm. And then um, from there, I went to college for culinary school, but that didn't last long because I felt like it was moving way too slow. <laughs> so mm-hmm. I kind of ventured out on my own and started cooking, like, as a side job, and now it has turned into a full-time business. So, yes, yeah, that's my job. Wow. Isn't it awesome? So you're saying that from three years old, you already knew. You could taste it. You could see it. You could smell it and became that 
infatuated with it that you wanted to make a career out of it. So as you began, you were getting uh, to be a teenager, going through school life, and then you decide, listen, I want to open my own restaurant. What took you from just cooking, enjoying it, to making a career out of it? Um, I believe the whole time I knew it was a passion, but I was really just doubting myself. And I will tell you, uh, mm-hmm. when, when when I was working in my last job, I was starting to enjoy the cooking as a side job more than my actual real job. And it was becoming a struggle to go to work every day because it wasn't really what I wanted to do. Um, I invested in business coaching, actually, and my coach convinced me to do what you love, and you will be okay. So, you know, after a few months of doing that, I went ahead and quit, and it just was up from there. Wow. And listen, I'm sure once you did your first job, I'm sure, talk to us about how it felt to know that you did your first job, it was something you loved to do, and to see that other people loved it as well. Um, How did you feel at that moment? Oh, it was amazing. Uh, one thing mm-hmm. I really uh, love about myself is I'm very passionate about the things that I do, and I'm very passionate about mm-hmm. cooking. Uh, my main focus is to always make sure that people feel the love in my food the same way they do in my personality. Uh, I, you know, mm-hmm. most people try to run their like business or do their events like in a, you know extremely professional mm-hmm. business way I do, but I also cater to my customers' needs to make people know that it's a personal experience for them as well as me. So after I did the first one and talking to so many people and getting so many compliments, I, my confidence soared through the roof after that. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, yeah, this is great. Mm-hmm. And it was for a corporate place. So, you know, I really had to come on my A game. And from there, it was just like, if mm-hmm. I did that, I know I can do many other things. So it, it felt so great. It was just such a blessing. I'm like, I can't even explain it. <laughs> mm. Well, you segue right into my next question. And I wanted to know, how did your faith play a role in you transitioning from your natural job into where you are now? And what, how does your faith give you strength to continue to do what you do? Um, it, I will say that having my own business has gave me faith that I did not know I had. And I say that because mm-hmm. I'm always one of those people that has to see it to believe it. Going into the mm-hmm. world of entrepreneurship when I've worked regular jobs all my life, you don't see it. You know, you don't see it up front. With entrepreneurship, mm-hmm. the, the the sacrifices and, the, you know, the advantages, they all come after you do all the hard work. So that was my mm-hmm. biggest thing. I couldn't see it. So when I finally mm-hmm. did get the faith to do it, you know, the, the faith from there just, just got bigger. You know, I would pray about it, manifest it. You know, I'd tell God to give me different signs. You know, I believed that it, if it was meant to be, that he would give me a sign. And sure enough, like, all of a sudden my faith went from, like, oh, I don't know, to, like, oh, man, I can I can kill this. It was just wow. like a switch off. And from there it was like, oh, yeah, if you wouldn't give me the challenges if you didn't know I could overcome them. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. I love it. And, you know, I wanted to say we were talking earlier about different types of dishes when I was talking about, um, you know, you are what you eat. But I want to know from a chef's perspective, you know, there are so many different ways that people are eating now. Can you tell us what types of dishes and what types of cuisines you offer? Yeah, sure. So, whew, not too much I don't do. I will say that my favorite things to do uh, right now are, like, uh, any type of pasta, seafood dishes, or, like, tacos. Mm-hmm. I I make so many different kinds of tacos and pastas. Like, for example, one of my mm-hmm. customer favorites is uh, beef short rib spaghetti. Nothing that nobody serves wow. around here. This is something I came up with one day. Decided to sell it mm. on a food day, and it just blew up after that. <laughs> so wow. that's, that's one of my favorite things. Um, I'm a really big surf and turf person, so shrimp and steak. I've made shrimp and steak alfredo, mm. shrimp and steak egg rolls, 
Anything you can combine the two in it, I've tried it. Shrimp and steak, potatoes, breakfast bowls. I've done it all. Um, within the last year, I've recently expanded my menu out to vegan. So I cook mm-hmm. on Tuesday night at a poetry night um, called Word Up, and a lot of the poets, poetry um, performers and artists in there are vegan. So I've been learning mm-hmm. how to make vegan pastas, vegan Chinese dishes. I've, I've expanded that, wow. you know, put those beyond my beliefs. Um, when you asked me, now this question combined with the last question, when you asked me about faith and then this question, I always like to tell people, I like to compare faith to like being in the kitchen or doing my job. Mm-hmm. Um Sometimes you go in not knowing what you're getting yourself into or not knowing what somebody's going to ask you to do, and you just kind of have to believe that it's going to be okay without seeing that it's going to be okay. Um, same That's way with awesome. cooking, you know, like recipes in the kitchen. I tell people I don't always follow recipes because I feel like it's better when you do it according to the taste. And a lot of people who are not, like, professional chefs, they, like, doubt themselves in the kitchen. Cooking is real easy. It's just like going into a job and learning what you need to do. You just got to have faith that it'll taste right, you know? Wow. And I heard you say you offer cooking classes. Tell us about that. Someone may be thinking, listen, I need to learn how to cook. Yeah, Erica can teach you. Can you share with your cooking classes how they would be able to uh, have those uh, classes with you? Yes. So currently I offer classes in my home as well as a customer's home if they would like. And I've recently added Zoom classes for those who want to do it in the comfort of their own home. Um, We Mm -hmm. have individual classes as well as group classes. There are different levels. Uh, with the group classes, there's beginners, there's intermediate, and then there's the advanced level. Um, and there's also a class that combines the three so that people can learn from each other. So I have, you know, quite a few different options. Uh, people who are interested in taking my cooking classes are welcome to, you know, follow me on social media and inbox to my business page, or you can also send an email to savory succulents at gmail.com and I'll be more than happy to you know send you over a schedule pricing and we can get it going. I also offer junior chef classes. You know, I I love kids so any kids starting love from you. the age of seven on up are welcome to join my junior chef classes. Um Well you know what you go ahead, please. Oh, I was gonna say and for those high school students out there I offer internships as well. Awesome. That is awesome. You were segueing right into the next thing I wanted to ask you about. Three (laughs) years old, you were cooking. And as a mom, do you see that in your children? And if so, um, you know, what are their favorite things to make with you? So, yeah, so more recently, uh, my daughter has gotten into cooking, and it's because of TikTok, sadly, not because of me. <laughs> um, I've been trying to get in the kitchen for a while, but because they have all these TikTok trends with, you know, microwavable dishes and everything like that, she's gotten really big into that. So I've just dragged <laughs> on over to my side. <laughs> but she mm-hmm. loves um, some of the things she likes doing. They're like little small things, like if I'm doing like a brunch or something, she likes filling up the syrup cups or if I'm doing salad, she likes mm-hmm. filling up the ranch and Italian cup. She loves helping me with anything mm-hmm. pasta related, whether it's the noodles or, you know, chopping up the meat in a pan. She loves making mm-hmm. breakfast food. She can make a killer bacon and egg sandwich and she makes a really good yeah. grilled cheese. Yeah, so uh mm-hmm. she actually did an episode on my show teaching kids how to do microwave safe meals in silicone dishes mm-hmm. so they don't burn themselves. So that's that's yeah, awesome. it's, it's exciting having her in there. <laughs> See, at high school and grade school, listen, you're the mom to have. You understand? You would say, hey, I'm just going over to my friend's house. And listen, you know that when they come there, they're going to have a fabulous meal. So that's an awesome thing. I also wanted to ask you, um, you said you have junior classes, internships. Um, You want people to follow you on your business page. I would like to know, could you give the listening audience where they can find you and um, how they're uh, connected? You said your business page, is that located on Facebook? Where can we find you? Yes, so my business page is Savory Succulents, and I'll spell that out. It's S A. 
V O R Y S U C C U L E N C E. It's Savory Succulents on Facebook as well as Instagram. All right. And then my and then, email is uh, Savory Succulents mm-hmm. at gmail.com. Good. Can you give it to them one more time? I kind of interrupted you for both things. So in case they didn't have a pen or paper, they can get that information again for me. Sure. Uh, so my Facebook page as well as Instagram are both Savory Succulents. Uh, S-A-V-O-R-Y-S-U-C-C-U-L-E-N-C-E. And my email is savorysucculents at gmail.com. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Now, do you have any upcoming events that you'd like to make? Now, let me say this, listening audience, because I've already asked. I've already asked. He's booked up pretty much most of April, May, and June. So that lets you know the quality of our work. But would you like to share any additional information of any events you may be having coming up or anything else you'd like for the listening audience to know about? Uh, Yes. So spring is coming up, which is my favorite time of the year. Uh, You follow Mm -hmm. me on my social media pages, you'll see that I often host spring dinner parties and spring tasting where you can buy tickets and come in and uh, get a couple of tickets for food. Um, There will be a wine bar, um, photo Mm. booth. I do all types of things like that. Awesome. Say Resuculants has also added travel to the agenda this year. So those girls trips and reunions, we travel to it all. Keep that in mind as well. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I love what you're doing, and I highly recommend Chef Erica Dorsey. Uh, she said, I tell you, I was keeping her. She had posted something, and it looked so delicious. Anybody else wish they had smell of vision I'm telling you, I looked at it, and it was such a beautiful dish. And then um, just the quality of what I've heard about you, uh, we have a mutual uh, sister that we love, Tina Turnipsey Adams. So I want to, uh, Tina Adams Turnipsey, I always get the names and stuff, but awesome, awesome event planner. And just to know that uh, you're doing a great job. I want to encourage you um, that are listening, Erica, as she uh, will finish up, but I really want you to take note of her. You know, it's never too young to learn anything. Three years old, She was learning to cook. She was understanding all of the chemistry and science of cooking at a very young age. And that is giving her the blessing of being able to live out her dream. I want to encourage you today, don't ever give up. Uh, Know that dreams do come true. You're talking to someone whose dream came true. She's doing what she loves. And if you can take anything from her on today, not only take the dreams come true, but she has a great balance. She's a mom. Uh, She's doing it well where she's able to do what she loves and able to also spend that quality time and time with her daughter. I want to also advise you, if you will, those of you that keep saying, I want to learn how to cook, make sure you reach out to Chef Erica Dorsey uh, to find out her availability of her classes and times as well as her spring events that are coming up so that you can become, because I believe I know, I was telling my husband, I think we're going to take advantage of some things. So we want to make sure we find out those dates and find out what she has going on because it's nothing like having that luxurious life. When you hear the word chef, you feel wonderful. So I thank you for what you do before you leave, Erica, uh, Chef Erica, if you don't mind. Would you encourage the listening audience, leave them with something that can inspire them to continue on? Perhaps there's someone out there who said, you know, maybe I didn't think I could cook as well. You took their passion and made it into a career. Can you encourage the listening audience for what's on your heart to help them to understand that dreams do come true and whatever else God will put on your heart? Yes, so my advice to 
anybody out there considering their dreams, thinking about their dreams, follow what your dreams and your heart are telling you to do. Um, One -hmm. thing that I always encourage people to do is do your research, take some time, look into things, um, find people who are doing something similar to what you're trying to learn about, whether it's a hobby or pick up an entrepreneurship. Just take the time to look into everything, do your research, and connect with people. Connect with people who are like-minded or who are doing similar to what you are doing. You know, follow your heart. Don't do something because it looks enticing if it's not your passion. Because one thing about Mm -hmm. um, following your dreams, it's your dream. It's not anyone else's. Don't let anybody discourage you or tell you that your dream is not achievable because it is you wouldn't have the vision if it if it wasn't obtainable. Awesome. I'll take that advice. Thank you so much because it's so important. It really, really is. Uh, we start off saying we believe we're gonna do it. And then like you said, there are some challenges. I love the fact that, you know, we have those uh that really challenge our faith to believe that we can do it, and you are an excellent example of that. Thank you for being with us today, Chef Erica Dorsey. Uh, please look her up, Savory Succulent. Uh, she'll be there to serve you. Thank you again for joining us on the Just For You podcast on Elation Radio. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed it. Thank you. Well, listen, you just heard from the fabulous chef, Erica Dorsey. Not only does she have her ability with her business to cook, she has a cooking show. And we'll be getting more information. Please follow her on social media to find out more things that she's doing and support. Listen, I want to talk about this before we get off the air, before the announcement. Every year I make it my business during um, the year as well as in Black History Month to support Black owners. And this is important because for years we've seen people um, that are struggling in business or people that are very successful in business. And we recognize everybody says, oh, well, I just don't want to do it just because they're Well, that's all the more reason. There are reasons we support businesses, and that is because there is strength in finding what she said. It is a worthy thing to know that you've done something, you've accomplished it, and it's your dream. So during this month, I want to encourage you to support a black-owned business, Uh, support people doing great things, support organizations doing great work. Don't just tell them how great they are. Take the time out to pull out your dollar bills and show them you're thinking that they're doing a great job. It's very important. And sometimes we recognize everybody may not have financially to do it that way. But then I want to challenge something. There are times we can go to McDonald's. There are times we can go to other establishments, uh, whether it's eateries or whether it's stores. And we just need to think about when we talk about how much our culture means to us, we want to share and support it. So pray that you will take that and do it because it will make someone else know that what they've strove for, what they've gone through has been well worth it. You don't know. You may be the very customer that gives them strength and hope if they felt like giving up just by taking the time to support. So please do that. As we said, this is Black History Month, all month long. Uh, we celebrate it. There have been various components and events that people have had, businesses with pop-ups. Listen, celebrate your culture. And the reason we can celebrate it is because we recognize the strength in loving each other. And listen, it's important to understand that when you say you are supportive of something or someone mean, uh, we had a lot that has happened throughout this last year and um, various components and uh, situations that have happened. When we say we support cultures and we support people, make sure we mean it 
for my heart. In other words, I won't say I support you and then cut you and stab you in the back. These are the things that destroy any person far more. You don't want to destroy your own culture. So let us think about we are what we eat and taking great and positive things with the Lord leading and guiding us and living worthy lives to love and appreciate um, everyone, but especially in your own culture to be able to say not just I love you, but show you uh, in word or deed it's important. Listen, we've come to the close of another podcast. I do want to encourage you with some very wonderful events. I want to say, if this is your birthday month, we're going to celebrate you. Hey, I may not be your best friend, may not have known you very long, but I want you to know here, and just for you, and also on Elation Radio, we celebrate you. Perhaps you're going through something and it's the exact opposite. You need prayer. You need strength. We want you to know that here just for you. We are praying for you. We don't just say it. We don't take it lightly. We actually do it. So we want you to know that we're praying for you. Also, we want you to understand you're going to have times. You're going to have needs. There are various components and it's hope for you. We want to let you know that on this weekend, on February 26th, the Urban League St. Louis is hosting another food drive, and it's going to be from 12 noon to 3 p.m. at 1408 North Kings Highway Boulevard, St. Louis, Missouri, 63113. Listen, Urban League St. Louis organization is doing a lot of great things. They also offer programming. Please check them out. You can reach them online at ulstl.com. That's ulstl.com. Com. Please make sure that you reach out to them for the needs and the offerings that they have. Also, in our area is United Way St. Louis. You can reach them by dialing 211. When you call, they'll ask you for information for the needs that you may have. It is a referral and they have other information that they will provide to you. But please do not sit in need if you know there are services that can help. They are there to serve. I also want to bring uh, to you some exciting information. The Color of Change organization will have their Black History Now Southeast Member Celebration. This is a virtual community event. It will be held on Sunday, February 27th from noon until 1.30 p.m., and that's Eastern Standard Time. For more information, you can go to my page under Facebook under Michelle Wright, M-I-C-H-E-L-E. Last name is Wright, W-R-I-G-H-T, for more information, and they'll be able to provide that for you. Also, I want you to be in prayer for those families that have lost a loved one. Perhaps they also may have some that have um, loved ones that are ill. I want to uh, have the family of Bishop Courtney Jones know we are praying for you. Uh, All families that are experiencing loss um, and that have had a loved one to go on to my very own family, my husband's family as well. Um, We want you to know that we love you for the Owens family and the passing of our cousin. Um, We definitely will need your prayer and support. We're asking also that you remember all that are hospitalized, all that are at home. You know, uh, when we came up, we used to have something called the sick and shut in list. Uh, right now, we need you to remember all of those that are sick and shut in and to pray for them because I'm sure they will appreciate it. Remember to pray for our guest, Erica Dorsey, as she moves forward in the things that she has to do, Elation Radio. Um, this Friday, if you will be so kind for me, we 
uh, at Elation Radio have a a program and a service that is on Fridays on Club Show. And it has to be downloaded. You can also find this information on my page, on Kimmy Robertson's page. Uh, it is a phenomenal group of women that are serving, and the group is called From Ashes to Beauty. Again, the group is called From Ashes to Beauty. We would love for you to join our group, and we would love for you to support. On this Friday, I will be speaking, and the topic that I'll be speaking on is called to serve. Listen, it's so important to understand what serving is all about. I know we do it, but there is something that the Lord requires of each and every one of us, and you're going to be excited, and I am excited to share it with you. Please join us on Clubhouse. That will be on this Friday, and on this Friday, on February 25th at 9 p.m., that's Central Standard Time, and 10 p.m. on Eastern Standard Time. Again, you can find out that pertinent information on our page under Facebook for me, Michelle Wright, and also for Kimmy Robinson. Don't forget to download Clubhouse to listen in and also to be able to be a part of our group where you'll have exciting information and to know exactly who's speaking and what's going on. I'd like to also congratulate our very own Shay Samuels, she has really done a great job and is up for an award in two categories, or three, um, and as well as our very own David Benson. God bless you all on the great work you're doing in the gospel music industry. Well, listen, as we said, we're coming to the close of another podcast. It is such an honor to serve you every Wednesday you can always hear us hear the Lord saying the same at 5.30 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are here to serve you. If you have a community announcement, as I've read those, please send them to me. You can reach me on Facebook, and that is with Michelle Wright, M-I-C-H-E-L-E, Right, W R I G H T, also on LinkedIn by the same name. And you may also email me at leading right, leading like you're leading someone, L E A D I N G W R I G H T, at gmail.com. On Instagram, it is His Blessed Girl 7. His Blessed Girl 7. Seven. I love to hear from you. I'm always appreciative of your words of encouragement, your prayers, and also your announcements and your prayer requests. Because as we say, we do pray for you. Thank you so much for joining us on today. We're going to pray out. And if you would be so kind, don't forget to support a Black-owned business. This is Black History Month as well as don't let it stop there. Let us be able to serve throughout the year, loving one another, as well as conditioning our minds first and foremost and our faith to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, it's not too late. It's still time while you have the blood running warm in your body. And we're going to pray that if you don't know him, that you'll come to know him and that he will lead you to a Bible-believing church that you can grow and learn more about what Christian living is all about. Thank you again for joining us. Join me in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this day. We thank you for our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank you for this time that has been well spent. Thank you for our visionary CEO, 
Kimmy Robinson. We want you to know, God, we love her, we miss her, we thank you for all that she does for Elation Radio. We thank you for our guest today, Chef Erica Doris Lee. Bless her in her business, bless her in life. God, continue to walk with her and talk with her, and we say thank you for her on today. We thank you for every listener that takes the time out every week. And, Lord, if it's on just for the guests, we are so appreciative of them taking time to listen in on the Just For You podcast. I thank you for my husband, my home. I thank you for all that you're doing in our life and our marriage. Thank you for 25 years, Lord. Continue to keep us strong in ministry as we do your holy will. I thank you for everyone that is listening in, those that will listen in to the replay. And, Lord, for those that don't know you, we ask that you would touch them, God. Give them a heart and a mind to want to serve you and give them what they need in this hour. Send a Christian laborer across their path. And, Lord, even if they're in their bedrooms or wherever they are and they're not in a local church, let them know, God, that you love them, that you care about them, and that they are on your mind. We pray, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, for our youth. We ask, O oh God, that you protect them, you keep them, give them strength all across the world, O oh God. We know that you are in control. We pray for every pastor, everyone in the fivefold ministry, asking that you keep them strong, keep their minds, keep our hearts, keep everything concerning doing your will and work, and to remember the greatest of these is the servant, O oh God, that we may always keep our hearts and our minds right with you. We ask God that you forgive us of our sins and we forgive others. Please continue to provide and make a way out of no way for each and every one of us. And Lord, what's small to somebody else is huge to somebody else. God, keep us in the mindset. We all need you for one thing or the other. And we're grateful that you've given us life to learn to grow, and to be all you created us to be. We ask that you have your divine will in life until we meet again. Cover us all in the blood of Jesus. Protect us from all hurt, harm, and danger. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. We want to thank you for listening again to the Just For You podcast with Pastor Michelle Y. Wright. We'll look to see you next time if the Lord says the same here on Elation Radio. Thank you again for listening, and have a beautiful rest of the week. Hallelujah. Had a dream that she could do it. Somehow she lost her way and didn't stick to it. She wanted the house, the cars, the money. She did all that she could. In her mind, she was so focused. Doing overtime in the diner. She wanted someone to wine and dine her. She didn't believe in herself. Nobody does Believe in yourself Believe in yourself Believe in yourself Even if nobody does Don't let nobody tell you that you can't When you can Don't let nobody tell you that you can When you can Don't let nobody tell you that you can To the doctor for some answers They said she wouldn't make it She couldn't take it She did all that she could Getting sick from the chemo Bank account started looking real low She knew she could make it She wouldn't take it She believed in herself Believe in yourself You can do it Believe in yourself Believe in yourself Even if nobody does Leave it.
in yourself Even if nobody does Don't let nobody tell you that you can't when you can Can when you can. 